Wonderland. Right, so I'm in one of my favorite forests. I was just taking a nature walk like I do one day and I saw a bright orange mushroom growing on the side of the trail. I had heard tale of a bright orange mushroom. I've heard about lobster mushrooms. I'd never seen one, but this kind of fit the description only because I knew it was supposed to be bright orange. And every year after year, lobsters come back on this path. I'm gonna go out here, pretty sure I'm gonna find some lobster mushrooms. I'll show you what they look like. We'll get them back to the kitchen and make some chowder out of them. All right, everybody, so we made it to the lobster patch, and here they are. Look how bright these guys are. A lot of people will walk by these and they don't even know what they are, um, but it's left a big spore deposit here. I'm gonna cut off this dirty base, put it back into the hole. This is what your lobster mushroom looks like, and they do smell fishy. Whew, they smell like lobster, but I'm gonna clean them up. See, here's an example of one that's heavily sporulated and it turns really white like this, it's still fine to eat. That's just the spores of the Hypomyces lactiflorum. You could even, you could even wash those off if it makes you feel better. Here's these beautiful lobster mushrooms growing in the wild. Another one here. And uh, they hide in little mounds and they can be really hard to spot until you see just a little of that orange peeking out of the corner. But that's kind of the fun of the hunt is that they're hard to spot, so beautiful. I'm gonna put these in my net uh, foraging bag so that they can drop spores as I walk. And I'm being very observant of little shrumps where there might be another one growing because once you find a few, uh, you're very likely to find more right in that same area. So there's one growing right here on the side of the trail. Kinda hard to see, it's under this shrump as I gently pull back this, this duff, you can see a few young mushrooms here. They're just little, definitely parasitized, but a bit more white. So yeah, these are little lobster mushrooms. They're just adorable. Just didn't get a lot of water and nutrition, so they never got very big. <laughs> Look at that, little nuggets, cute. So I'll cut that dirt off of the base, but you know, these are great lobster mushrooms too. Even when they're white and they're not fully orange, these are really, really good for eating. They'd go really well in a chowder. Once in a while you find one just randomly sitting on the side of the trail, like maybe a squirrel picked it and didn't carry it along with it, but this Beautiful lobster mushroom just sitting right alongside the trail. So, score. So this right here is a good example of one that would easily be missed. It's definitely just a shrimp. Here's what your lobster mushroom looks like growing trail side. Look at that, beautiful. Kind of looks like seafood, just the color of it is kind of like crab or lobster. So I'm gonna clean this off with my little brush. And I'm gonna cut off the base here. If you want one of these knives, the link is in the description. I'm gonna cut my base off, put it back in that hole. Just get them pretty clean so that they can go in the basket. I'm gonna put them in this foraging bag and again, this will be in the description as well. And then I cover my shrimp back up and keep moving. And here's another one. It's just a small lobster mushroom, but make sure you get it all the way from the base. It's a nice little nugget. Here's another one growing literally right on the side of the trail. It just comes out of the ground so easily, but you know, if you didn't know what you were looking for, wouldn't this look weird to you? I don't know how I overlooked these for so many years. I had to have seen these when I was walking on the trail, 
just never put a second thought into it. There's some little chunks down here in the dirt. We're going to leave that. But again, I will clean this up before it goes in my bag. All right, so it was successful. We found quite a few lobster mushrooms. Now it's time to take them back to the kitchen to prepare them and to make this delicious vegetarian uh, lobster mushroom seafood chowder. So let's go do that. All right, everybody. So we made it back to the kitchen with our lobster mushrooms. I'm definitely gonna have to clean them first, pick out the best ones, and then we're gonna make this lobster mushroom chowder. These things smell pretty seafoody right now. I could see why they call them a lobster mushroom for more than one reason. They're colored a lot like a lobster and they smell a lot like seafood. These have a lot of dirt on them though and a lot of people will tell you never to wash mushrooms but I'm not one of those people. Um, we're gonna be cooking these right away so I have no problem with rinsing these off and using a soft brush to clean all the dirt out of these crevices before we use these mushrooms. All right, so I take this old brush that I've used for barbecue sauce and I basically I'm just going to wash the top of this mushroom and just use this soft bristled brush to get all of the chunks of dirt and pine needles and debris out of there. And these are really hard mushrooms with kind of a crunchy texture so they're not going to absorb too much water at all. Um, and then the base right there, I'm going to make sure to go ahead and cut that off and look how beautiful and white that flesh is inside of there. Really beautiful. So this is a beautiful lobster mushroom. I'm going to lay them out on some paper towels um, just until I dice them up in a minute. Some of these really choice ones are the ones that I'm going to use. Um, any of the ones that are a little more beat up, I'm going to set aside and I'll probably dry them to be used for dyeing fabric on a later video. It's pretty cool. You can use the this mushroom to dye protein fabric like wool and silk. Um, so yeah, beautiful mushroom. So here we've got four beautiful lobster mushrooms that are ready to go into this chowder. I'm not making a huge amount of chowder. This should be more than enough mushrooms to make this really flavorful. All right, so now we're gonna dice up our lobster mushrooms and set them aside while we prep the other things. It really does kind of have the look of lobster meat. So now we're gonna make what's called a maripois, and that's the base of any good chowder, and that's gonna be some chopped up onions, carrots, and celery. All right, we're gonna start with a medium sized saucepan. We're gonna get this thing pretty hot. We're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of butter and start to sweat our maripois. All right, now not far behind our carrots, onion, and celery, we can go ahead and add in the lobster mushrooms because these all kind of cook at the same rate. Dang, so it's already got this amazing seafood smell. I wish you could smell this. I'm gonna keep this at about a medium heat until these veggies and mushrooms really start to soften up. Keep in mind, eating raw mushrooms isn't safe, any kind of mushroom. So you should always cook your mushrooms pretty well. So by the time that these carrots and celery get soft, these mushrooms should be plenty cooked. I'm gonna add in a scoop of garlic. Yes, this is garlic in a jar. 
This truly smells like buttery lobster right now. It's really amazing. I want to occasionally stir this, but I'm telling you what, with these fresh lobster mushrooms, this truly smells like seafood. It smells so good. I'm really honestly more excited about this now that it's cooking. All right, so our mushrooms have been cooking for like 10 minutes and we've got, actually got some nice caramelization going. And the red from the lobster actually kind of dyes the onion sort of a reddish yellow color. Everything's sort of taken on this yellowish color. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but from those red mushrooms came this really quite yellow color. This is the part where we're gonna make a roux. So we're gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Two tablespoons for this amount should be plenty. And we're gonna mix it all in. We want that flour really to mix in with that butter and the fat. And we're gonna actually, it really makes our veggies get kind of dry looking. But we're gonna turn the heat down just below medium. We're gonna actually let this sit and kind of cook for just a, just about a minute while sort of lightly stirring it so that we don't get that super raw flour taste. We actually want it to cook a little bit. All right, so once we've let our roux cook for just a little bit, I'm gonna start adding in half and half. And we're gonna add about half of this in here. I like a pretty thick chowder. You could also put potatoes in here, half a quart, and we kind of mixed it in there. I already see the half and half starting to take on this little bit of a yellowish tinge of the lobster mushroom, so interesting. Now we're gonna let this warm up, and as it starts to react with that roux, it'll start to thicken. So another thing you could do to add to this recipe is add some bacon in, but in the sake of keeping this pretty vegetarian, what I have here is liquid smoke, and I'm gonna add in just like a half teaspoon of liquid smoke, actually more just like five or six drops. This stuff is really powerfully concentrated, but it'll give it that kind of smoky flavor that I like in chowder. Now we're just gonna kind of like gently stir this while it comes up to temperature, and as it starts to get really hot and boil, it will start to thicken. So in the meanwhile, I'm gonna chop up some of this fresh parsley that I have here because I think all chowder is good with some fresh parsley in it. So I'm gonna exclude the stems and just kind of shave off all this greenery and chop it up. Some people wanna rinse it off and stuff and rinse all the flavor out of it. Personally, I like the flavor of the parsley. It just adds a bit of freshness to it. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this. You don't want your half and half to get too hot or it'll separate and destroy the whole thing. So we're gonna bring it up to temperature kind of slowly and really keep an eye on it, stirring it occasionally. All right, this is where I'm gonna add in a nice handful of this fresh parsley, just because I like that bright, fresh flavor. And also it adds just a beautiful color to our bisque or chowder. I think a bisque would be a little bit finer than these chunks. These chunks are pretty big, but uh, it really looks pretty rustic and it's starting to really smell up this kitchen like something delicious. Man, it, it smells like an actual seafood chowder in here. I know I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt to this. It's definitely gonna need some salt and fresh cracked pepper. Chowder is not complete without fresh cracked pepper. Check out the consistency of this lobster mushroom chowder. Okay, so here comes the real moment of truth. See how this lobster mushroom bisque tastes. It is so rich and it really does take on a seafoody flavor. I am not even kidding. This might be my favorite type of chowder to date. So if you get value out of videos like this and you want to see more cooking videos, please put it in the comments. Thanks so much for joining this episode of Mushroom Wonderland and we'll see you on the next episode. Much love everybody.